Good morning and afternoon. It is 9 a.m. Pacific. Welcome to The Sharing Show. Um, I'm Kane. Today I'm joined with David, better known as the Workday Sharing Guy. Also joining me today is Logan and Teresa and Sharing Show guests. Thank you, Kane, and welcome, everyone. Kim, can you please tell us the most important thing about the Zoom chat? Absolutely. So the most important thing during the sharing show is to make sure you are sharing. So please select all panelists and attendees when you're interacting with us through the chat so that everyone can see, everyone can share, and we can have a great show. So without further ado, I'm going to pass this over to you guys to take it from here. The first thing we're going to do is test your chat. And I would like you to switch it to all panelists and attendees. And then I'd like you to answer the question, which topic interests you most for the 9-9 share -thon? If it's business processes, put one in the chat. Reporting, two. Calculated fields, put three in the chat and make sure it goes to everyone. Dashboards is four, security is five, inbound EIDs is six, and integrations is seven. Logan, I'm gonna give people an opportunity here just so that they understand, the 9-9 share -thon, of course, is the 9th of September, and we're gonna do things a little bit differently this year. This is our sixth consecutive year of doing a September share -thon. Previously, it was called pre-rising, and so this year it's just, you know, the 9-9 September share -thon. And you get to pick one of these topics. Well, if that topic fills up, I think it's a good idea to let us know too. And two digits, so you get to choose two. The first digit, the tens column, is your first priority, your second priority. So if you put uh, um, 34, it means calc fields is your number one, and four would be uh, dashboards, would be your secondary. David, right, I so. just saw one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> you, I put them in your order, Logan. Mm. All right, so people are gonna understand a little bit more about why you get to pick a topic here as we move on with the show. Open Kahoot.it on your computer. Excellent, so on your phone, a browser, any browser on the phone or a computer, Kahoot.it, here's your pin, 44, 27, 706, 7006. Now, during the 9 share -thon, we'll use Kahoots when we do giveaways and for sh surveys like this, so people get to know who else is um, in the room, in the group. Um, but challenges too. So this one, there is no correct answer. This is just a survey. Uh, Kane, we're almost approaching 100, but let's go ahead and get started. So there are no correct answers here. Just let us know, you get to pick one, only one though. So how do you copy reports from Sandbox to production? Do you use solutions? Do you use object transporter or aux? Do you use something called configuration packages? Or do you just do things manually? Or maybe you're not even sure what we're talking about here. Maybe you've never heard of aux or solutions or configuration packages. So let's see here. Wow, this is excellent. Okay, and Amesh, this might help you during your sharing time. It looks like half, more than half, use AUX or object transporter. Next question. How do you handle manual repetitive tasks? Do you yourself work late or you're really not sure how you do this? Do you have a remote team and you tell them, hey, go enter these 100 people here? Do you hold a key party? A whole bunch of people get together and you each take 10 or however you do it. Or do you use an automation tool to handle manual repetitive tasks in Workday? So, oh, uh, okay, Anvesh, this is um, pretty nice. Um, not half, but the largest vote went to using an animation tool. Next is a lot of people work late. A lot of people did a key party. How many boomerangs do you have? Do you not have any boomerangs in your system? Uh, do you have one to 10? Do you have more than 10 boomerangs? Or what is a boomerang? Uh, now, boomerang, just so you know, the very first show, we had a, a boomerang, season one, episode one, and we wrapped up season two with a boomerang. So it kind of came around and it's coming up again. 
Okay, a lot of people don't have any boomerangs and a lot have maybe one to 10. Very few have more than 10 and a fair number of people don't know what a boomerang is. So stay tuned. Um, okay, Todd, Todd, that'll be for you. Uh, nine, nine registration is currently free. So what are you gonna do today? Are you gonna register? And, or are you gonna tell two friends, register now while it's free? Um, are you gonna ask your manager for funds because you're not gonna register in April or you're not gonna register today, so you're gonna need some funds. Or you're not even sure what 99 is. Let's see. Uh, oh, shoot, I wanted to change that what is 99 to all of the above. And that was a mistake I made. Okay, well, a lot of people have already registered or are gonna to register today. Uh, telling two friends is a good idea. You understand why as we, we reach to hit a thousand people coming this year to the share -a -thon. And who do we right. have on today's lineup of sharing fans? Go with David, the sharing guy. He's not done. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, well, now the pressure is on to go fast. All right. Hi, everybody. It's David, the sharing guy. A disclaimer, I don't work for Workday anymore. I used to. I was employee at 149 back in 2007 is where I started. My views do not in any way represent or match with Workday. Same with everybody here. It's just a bunch of customers and out into the ecosystem beyond customers, partners, Workday employees, everybody is joining here in the fun and we're all sharing with each other. Nobody's representing anybody but themselves. And I'm on the mission to help as many Workday customers as possible. I highly recommend joining the customer sharing movement. There's also the ecosystem sharing and networking. Those are both LinkedIn groups. And that's where you're gonna hear more about 99. So we've got the sharing show, we've got networking. Together, this makes an ecosystem share -thon on the 9th of September. This is a slide from last month. There was a challenge of who is Purple Squirrel's friend, also my friend, a four-legged friend. And there are some rules you only get to guess once and you have to contact me either through LinkedIn message or email. And the first person wins. And so it's been over a month. No, nobody's picked it yet. But can you be a purple squirrel? Some people ask, well, what's this purple squirrel thing all about? Well, purple squirrel is something you'll have to Google it. But if you know everything Workday, which hardly anybody does, or let's say nobody knows everything Workday, you're a purple squirrel. So let's get you one step closer to being a purple squirrel. When Logan asked you, which of these topics would you like to focus on? We're actually focusing on learning so you could pick up something that you might not know. So for example, if you don't have the purple ears yet or an eyeball or the mouth, you can focus on any one of these topics. And actually, if you could really cover a lot of these, maybe you are a purple squirrel. The other eyeball is for dashboards. Security, that you're in good hands here if you know Workday security well. Um, in your belly here is bringing in information, uh, inbound EIVs. And finally, of course, where I focus mostly, integrations, that's the red cape. So can you do all of those? Well, we're hoping to help as many of you as possible pick up more parts of your purple squirrelness. Three chances here to win an Apple Watch. And one of them we just talked about, Purple Squirrel's Friend. Watch the previous episodes on YouTube. You might even have to go back to season two to get the answer. But what else do we have? We have a Workday 300 guest challenge. Guess. So when will Workday cross over 300? I'll talk about that in a second. Rules. You need to be able to contact. We need to contact you. No typos in your email, please. Go to customer sharing movement. Also, another rule. We reserve the right to break a tie live on the show next month. So what is the Workday stock 300 break over date challenge? You have to pick, you get to pick the dates in which Workday crosses over 300. It has to be 301, I'll explain why in a second. This second picture shows in the past six months, it came close to 80s, but not yet 300. This picture shows five years of Workday stock and a line back when we did this initially, it was Workday 200. And it went up and over and up and over and so many people won because we didn't say only one person wins. Take a guess, how do you do it? There's a SurveyMonkey link under, after SurveyMonkey R and then WDay300. Someone hopefully puts that in the chat so that people can guess a date, one date only. And it did hit, Workday stock hit 200 exactly one day. And it was somebody's birthday. They were gonna win the birthday challenge, but it didn't hit 200 and a penny. So they were one penny away. 
That's it for me, Logan and Teresa. Thanks, David. Who's next on the lineup of sharing fans? We have Andre from the UK. Thanks a lot. It's tough to follow um, a purple squirrel and some Apple Watch giveaways, but um, I'll try and talk about some recruiting things instead. So, so this, this particular problem uh, was with a, a Workday customer who was a retail organization that had multiple stores uh, in single cities. Uh, and when they were trying to hire people, people wanted to apply only to their local store, not to one on the other side of town or in another part of the city. The other problem uh, that we had was around how we used the Workday location names. So when we did the implementation initially, uh, you know, we used the names that everybody within the business was familiar with, um, and that was fine on the inside. Uh, the problem was, was that these were mapped to the, the company hierarchy, the location hierarchy, uh, and then when this was shown to people in the outside world, um, it didn't quite make as much sense. Um, this was then made even worse when we used scraping services to pull information from the external career site, because sometimes it was actually picking cities and towns in the wrong state or in some cases, even the wrong countries. So there's two parts to the solution for this. So the first part was to change the location hierarchies. So Workday allows you to have two additional location hierarchies, which you can include on your external career site. So we moved away from using the one that was used internally um, that was understood by everybody internally and instead just went to one that was purely geographical. This meant that people could easily filter by country and state or province and even down to city just to find the jobs they were looking for. Um, so even though we did this purely on a geographical basis, uh, you can also use this uh, to track it by product line or functions uh, if you need additional parameters on your external career site that you think your candidates would use. And there is a link uh, on this page to take you to the uh, how to add these to your uh, find jobs report as a search facet. So the second part of the solution uh, was we also wanted to have how it was displayed on the screen slightly different. So for those of you that are familiar with the external career site, you will probably have seen this panel in the top right, which uses these field XML aliases to put information up there. Now, some of this is, is really useful, uh, but then again, the things like the job posting, the, the job requisition identifier, it's more of an internal thing. External candidates don't necessarily need to see it in the search results. So we started off by trying to see if we could find another field, uh, other field XML aliases that would have the new location hierarchy or other information that would make more sense to external candidates. And unfortunately, we, we were stuck. So what we used instead is we used the external location field and we kind of cheated. So what we did is into those, that external location field, we put the data that we wanted. Uh, and we found if you put five spaces before the pipe delimiter and then five spaces after, it looks exactly the same as how it would look if it came from some real, uh, real fields in the system. So it was kind of a crude fix, but it did work quite well. And that meant that instead of having the standard job requisition ID, the internal location name, and then the number of days that it had been open, instead we could pretty much make it look however we want. So this meant that we could uh, both make something that was more useful to external candidates. And it was also a way that we could easily adapt any location names so that the external scraping services uh, could pull the job through. That's it. Okay, thank you, Andre. And you're gonna stay on this Zoom for the breakout time for those who wanna talk more about recruiting. Thank you, Andre. Thank you. Who's up next on today's lineup of sharing fans? Up next, we have Animesh from India. Welcome, Animesh. Hi, everyone. Today, we'll be talking about Object Transporter. Now, Object Transporter, which is also known as AUX, is used to migrate validated changes among tenants. Like if you'll see on the, on the left top corner, you can migrate or copy changes between or among your implementation tenants, implementation tenants and sandbox, and finally, from sandbox to production. Uh, with object transport, you cannot directly go from an implementation tenant to production. And this particular picture that you see is taken from the, uh, from the community page uh, for which you can see the link. Now, on the right-hand side, if you'll see, you know, I have compared it with the other migration or the data loading tools like iLoads and Inbound EIB, which uh, most of the, the implementers use uh, iLoads to load the data in initially. Inbound EIB is most of the customers, all the workday users are doing for loading the data, but that is different from uh, you know solution in Aux. Solution was an earlier like earlier tool 
to move things uh, from one tenant to another, but it has some issues uh, in terms of overwriting the calculated fields specifically, and that is where Ox was introduced. Ox was originally introduced five years back with Workday 25, uh, you know, taking into consideration the concepts from iLoads and Solution, like Ox uses the same web services that iLoads uses and the concept of bulk migration, uh, which is uh, used by Solution. Uh, we'll be talking more about the diagram that you see on the right corner, right bottom corner in our breakout sessions, like what are the major differences between the solutions and an aux and how it is better. Yeah, and, and Amesh, I'll jump in here that that page on community has over 13,000 uh, views on it, and it's been out since September 2019. So there were some people who said they um, hadn't heard of Ox or they don't use Ox. So I do, I like this idea of you going further into the detail during the breakout. Okay, now this is the most important part of Ox where, you know, one of the key things about Ox is the diff analysis. And these are the left, the left top corner that you see, these are the different, different icons that you see when you are initiate an Ox. And, uh, you know, three most important icons that you want to take, you know, that you want to know about is the new, the blue icon, the changed, the looping yellow arrows, and the, the, the left one, which is removed, right? So if you'll see on the, you know, the left bottom, there is a screenshot where I've tried to represent the different, different icons and how the diff analysis reports looks like. With a great solution, there are few things that you need to consider. Again, this is not the, this is not the case that Ox will, you know, run forever. So there is a time limit, a 45 minute hard timeout. If the, if the object Ox, you know, goes beyond that, it will gonna error out. There are a lot of objects which are supported by Workday uh, for Ox, but the objects with, which without a SOAP is not supported by Ox right now. Also, you'll not see any security objects uh, supported by Ox for now. In terms of security, you need a uh, view only access on those, on those objects in the source tenant and the edit access in the target tenant, which you're trying to migrate. Also Workday does not recommend to migrate between preview and non-preview tenants. Uh, and we'll be talking more in detail about the reasons why it is not recommended. It's not like this that you can't do it, but it's not recommended. Now there are certain benefits, like, like we talked about diff analysis, dependency checking, and the way how you can track how many migrations you have done uh, so far into the, into the system. So we'll be talking more about that into our breakout sessions. I clicked on the link that you put up here to say all the supported objects, and there's so many. It's more like what isn't supported by Ox. And it turns out our next guest is going to point out something that's not supported by Ox. Right. So this was just a just a high level introduction that we've talked about uh, to wrap it up. You know, we have some add on functionalities uh, like optional migrations, configuration packages, uh, security on Ox and SSO configurations that we'll be talking about uh, in the next month's uh, sharing show. Also, uh, you know, a couple of days back, I have posted uh, an article on my LinkedIn, uh, you know, describing the details of Ox. So, you know, you can, you can find me on LinkedIn, read about that article, post me any questions, and we'll be discussing more about uh, all these things in our breakout sessions. That's all it. Right. Thank Th you so much. Thank you, Animesh. And then, yeah, during the breakout, of course, at that time, people share emails and because and, that's networking time. Thank you, Animesh. Fantastic. Thanks, Animesh. Who do we have next on today's lineup? Next, we have Amvesh from India. Hi, everyone. We all know the power of one of Workday, but even with all this power, there are still areas in Workday which are quite laborious and manually intensive. And few of these are in compensation review process. One of them is adding employees who, after being eligible, are not in the compensation cycle because they are on certain long-term leaves, making them inactive. And one of my clients had 700 of such employees to be added to the cycle, which increased their cycle preparation time by a week. Also, before launching the marriage cycle into the production, it's at least tested thrice in a testing environment. And launching this for an organization with more than 300,000 employees and more than 15,000 organization is a painstaking three hour long process. And lastly, not all the configuration in Workday and objects can be migrated. And one of them is Koshnaya, 
which requires quite a lot of time to be configured on each tenant. Uh, that can go up to half an hour or more than an hour, depending on complexity of the questions. So pain aside, how can we make our consultants work in this marvelous work they will without getting bogged down by repeated tasks? The solution is browser automations. There are many available and it's great to see that a lot of clients are already using it. There are These are tools that I've tried out. Selenium is a de facto in this space and Catalan Recorder has few bells and whistles already built in. Uh, let's take an example of how these tools can help. Now, the scenario I'm presenting is adding inactive employees into the compensation review process. The first thing is we get list of all the employee IDs from Workday who have been kicked out because they are on long-term leave and create a CSV file out of it. That's the data source for our script. Next, we will create an automation script that will work just like how a regular uh, compensation admin works. It will search for add compensation review task, select the compensation review process, search for the employee. And once the employee is selected and everything is ready, it will add the employee to the cycle and it will loop until all the employees have been added. The best part of this is you don't even need to watch when this is happening. You can work on other tasks while this works in the background and use your time to improve work they are doing. I hope this has got you intrigued and would love for you to join the breakout room, breakout room for more details. Thanks for your time. Back to you, David. All right. Thank you, Anvesh. So several things I'd like to share with everybody. Maybe we'll do it next month, Anvesh, about uh, uh, our interactions together. Um, but I think through these slides, people maybe have an idea. But uh, I want to encourage people to drop by your breakout room, at least get the connection with you. And those who have input on, on their automation approach, that's one of your options for the breakout rooms. Thank you again, Amdash. So who do we have next on today's lineup? Uh, my name's Todd. I'm from Rochester, New York. And I've been a guest on the show several times. Uh, I'm here to talk about a, a boomerang use case today. But before I do, I wanted to provide an update on uh, who you could call a quote unquote, another returning guest, uh, that being Frederick Douglass. In uh, the Sharing Show episode from February, season three, episode one, we celebrated Valentine's Day and the I Heart Work Day photo contest. Uh, and then our topics that month revolved around diversity. And uh, I shared a story of how a friend uh, on LinkedIn shared a, uh, a post about Frederick Douglass. He's a, he was a, um, a resident of Rochester, New York for a number of years. So we're really proud of him. So I, I, post, I pulled up a picture of my kids in front of the statue. And then on Valentine's Day, they dedicated the airport in his name, the local airport. And then this week, uh, I heard on the news yesterday that the, that the House is to vote on a bill to admit Washington, D.C. as the 51st state. And it's going to be renamed to Washington, the Douglas Commonwealth. So all of this stuff uh, kind of came together in a really uh, nice and coincidental fashion. And um, there's an update on our friend Frederick Douglass. <laughs> Thank you, Todd. Who were the guests that us having Frederick Douglass on the show in February? An honor to him that that would result in the, his name on the 51st state. <laughs> Yeah. Very nicely done. It's great. So, so let's get into uh, the boomerang uh, topic this month. Um, as a reminder of, of what a boomerang is, because some of you have never heard of it. Uh, obviously, when you think about a boomerang, it's something that you throw out and it goes and takes flight and, and ultimately comes back to you. So a boomerang in uh, the workday world is where you pull data out of Workday, you do something with it to uh, fix or enhance it, and then you load it back into Workday. And you do that through a, a web service enabled report, a RAS report, it goes through an XSLT transformation, and then you pull it back in through Workday public web service slash APIs. 
So the use case I'm highlighting today is on processing employee recognition award payments. I've done a solution where uh, we delivered an employee recognition uh, solution within Workday that's comprised of a custom dashboard and utilizes the request framework and questionnaires and then the business process approvals. So at the tail end of this process, once the recognition award is approved and closed within the request framework, the coordinator launches an integration in Outbound EIB. That Outbound EIB, uh, if you refer back up to the top there, uh, the Outbound EIB runs your RAS report, which returns a worker or workers. It goes through an XSLT transformation, which takes report data and that formats it into a web service request. And then finally, a packaged solution from the community called Web Service Requester is what takes the XSLT output, the formatted web service request, and it shoots it back into Workday as a request one-time payment. So what happens, uh, again, at a, at a high level is once the recognition award is approved, we boomerang, we throw out the award recipient, it goes out, it gets converted into a request one-time payment and then gets pulled back into Workday and it goes through the one-time payment process, ultimately paid out in the employee's paycheck. What's great about the EIB approach to Boomerangs is it requires no studio development. So you don't have to be, uh, uh, you don't have to know studio. Uh, if you can do reports, EIBs, and a little bit of XSLT, you can do it. Uh, so here's, these next slides are just some screenshots of some of those components specifically of the EIB. The employee, solution, the employee recognition solution is something that we could perhaps highlight in a different show in the future. But this is the uh, RAS report uh, that contains the fields that we will use from the recognition request and then the last part, this isn't the report, sorry, this is the VP. <laughs> uh, the last part, thanks, David. The last part of the uh, recognition BP is for the coordinator to launch a to-do. They launch that uh, and it launches the EIB. Again, you'll see here that it contains a RAS report as the data source and the XSLT uh, file that will convert the report data to uh, to the request one-time payment um, format. This here is the report, just contains the fields from the request process, worker or workers, um, and some of the other, uh, thanks, and like uh, some of the questionnaire answers that they provide uh, gets carried over. Next, as we go into the XSLT, on the left is the workday output. In the middle is the XSLT template, and that's what the day the workday data goes through the template to produce the web service call or the web service request file. Now, on the right, this is a utility that was developed by one of our workday friends uh, called ERP Helper, and uh, we featured this in last month's episode, and I immediately uh, sent Shannon, who, who developed this utility, a note on LinkedIn saying, I've been waiting my entire workday life for this product because I'm not a hardcore developer. When I've had to do some XSLT work, I do it in Notepad, but we had no way to really test it. We had to throw it in workday and it either fails or it works. You cross your fingers and hope for the best. Uh, so with Shannon's ERP helper tool, it allows me to pull down a, a template into the middle that I can provide some edits to. And then with the workday data on the XSLT tab, I click transform and it will tell me if I am successful in creating that web service request. When that happens, I go to the API calls tab and I specify my connection what service, what API am I using? In this case, compensation. And then I click the call API and it takes my XSLT output and it tests that load 
into Workday. So once all of that happens, uh, I've successfully tested it. Then I can put it into the tenant and, and do more testing. But it's been a phenomenal little tool that I've used so much in the last month. Um, so okay. I don't know, uh, Shannon, shout if you want to. Yeah, shout, shout out, to, out Shannon. to Shannon. First, though, Shannon, um, as you come off a of mute, want to make sure everyone knows this report. When you get the XML from the report, it goes to the far left column. The middle is the part that Todd says he has fun doing. And then the far right, uh, this ERP helper tool from Shannon um, helps <laughs> helps avoid what Todd says. Like the only way to know it works is you have to put it in a workday and run it. Well, this all happens in Notepad++ thanks to Shannon. Shannon, are you able to join the, uh, the breakout here, Todd's breakout on Boomerangs? And also, if in case anyone has any questions for you on the ERP helper. Yes, absolutely. I'll be joining and uh, just, you know, what an honor to um, know that Todd's using this and getting, uh, you know, a, a benefit from this. So thanks. Uh, this, this is really, uh, really gratifying. That's, that's great, Chance. It's, it's, it's a nice pattern, right? You're a guest. A month later, someone's telling you how great it's been, right? Same, same maybe with Anvesh with his automation tool. He's a guest. And then maybe next month, we'll hear from someone who's been using it. Um, okay, Todd, to wrap us yes. up here. Yeah. So um, just to uh, reset the stage, this EIB, it, it runs the RAS report to pull out, put, uh, pull report data out of Workday. It uh, gets transformed. And then the last step of the EIB process is to launch what's called Web Service Requester. That's a solution. It's a studio solution. You need it. You don't need to know it. Uh, you have that in your tenant. And then the last part of the EIB business process is it takes your XML output, which is labeled as a deliverable document. And that is what gets loaded into the request one-time payment web service. So the end result is we have a recognition program that we're able to execute with common components. Those winner or winners, there could be um, one or many winners. Those all come through this boomerang get loaded into one-time payments and then paid out through payroll. All right, Todd, you and Shannon might not know, but great comments coming your way in the chat. So take to the chat if you'd like, as we're getting ready to wrap up a few more guests. Who do we have up next? Next, we have Jill from Wisconsin. Welcome, Jill. Hey, everyone. Again, my name is Jill. I'm a first time guest here for the Sharing Show. I'm based out of a suburb of Milwaukee. Uh, Wisconsin. Um, I have, though, been in the ecosystem for a little over 11 years, uh, working for three different customers myself, including an early adopter. But I've primarily had a focus on HCM um, and talent management as a whole. I do want to highlight what I'll be talking about for my breakout session. It's Career Hub. As you can see from the image um, from Community, Career Hub has many different uh, touch points. And Career Hub is a newer product for Workday, so I don't necessarily have anything really exciting um, as some of the prior panelists. But in Career Hub's uh, breakout session, we will be covering, you know, a lot of sharing around a few of the, the key products, such as Skills Cloud, Career Hub, and some of the related solution touch points. If you are considering Career Hub, I will clarify the availability terms and the steps to really get the ball rolling. And I'll also highlight some of the required and recommended deployment considerations to help you prepare for your deployment. Um, I do have a resource. It's a free product resource from Workday um, that is only available to customers. So I will also point you in the direction there. Um, I am certainly looking forward to that lively discussion um, from our group all around Career Hub and its related features. If you're currently you know, using or considering Career Hub, I'd love to have you share with the group if this has had an impact or perhaps driven your talent strategies or if you have any change management tips or recommendations that you can uh, share with the group, it would greatly be appreciated. Now, if you have already deployed a Career Hub, which may be some or very few of you, I think that several others may be interested in any best practices or lessons learned around Career Hub. Again, it's just a great way to network and share those experiences. So I look forward to seeing you in the Career Hub session. Uh, thank you, Jill. Um, just in case people didn't pick, it, pick this up, drop into Jill's session for anything Career Hub, including special links. Jill, just in case, are you able to go past the hour? 
um, if needed, because you have your own Zoom. Are you able to go long? I can. Okay, excellent. Thank you, Jill. And who do we have next up? Um, up next, we'd like to hear from our recruiting sponsors. Phenom is a Workday certified partner for candidate experience. The Phenom Talent Experience Management Platform automates administrative tasks and personalizes experiences for candidates, resulting in the attraction and conversion of both active and passive candidates on your career site. Interpreting billions of events and human interactions, Phenom AI delivers personalization, conversation, insights, and automation throughout the talent journey. Phenom's system of intelligence exists at the core of their platform, built on a vast network of data, contextual industry models, and deep learning. Thanks for being a sponsor, Phenom. All right, thank you, Phenom. And Devin, um, just to check if you um, are on audio, maybe you wanna say a few words uh, about having people drop by your virtual booth, but also it's your Zoom. Are you, are you able to keep it open past the hour? David, I can keep it open as, as long as you need me to. I'm, I'm happy to be here and, and talk all things uh, candidate experience with Workday and also uh, what the, the Phenom and Workday partnership entails and, and maybe a sneak peek on some things to come as well. So uh, certainly happy to answer any questions and, and thank you for having me on the show. Thank, thank you, uh, Devin. Phenom was a sponsor last year as well. And um, we've had uh, people share um, how they use Phenom with Workday Recruiting. Uh, so thank you, Phenom. Uh, Logan, who do we have next? Uh, next, we would like to thank GoodTime. GoodTime is the hiring experience platform that automates and helps scale interview scheduling and interviewer training so your candidates have an amazing interview experience, meeting a diverse set of well-trained interviewers. As a Workday partner, GoodTime is committed to providing our mutual customers, their users, and their potential new hires with a next level experience. We are very excited to have Workday sponsoring our event and um, you can visit them in a breakout room as well. Okay, so um, Don, um, same question I asked Devin, you've got like a, a virtual booth here on the expo floor. Um, are you able to go past the hour? Yeah, David, we'll be able to go past the hour, um, no problem. And thank you for having us again and look forward to hopefully speaking with some folks in the, the chat room. Okay, and Don, I'm also gonna add that we, the customer sharing movement, we use good time ourselves for share dates, which is something that you've maybe seen on previous shows. Andre, who was, uh, is going to stay on for the recruiting breakout, um, is, it was his idea, initially sort of you know, stolen from, from Workday Rising, having brain dates. So we have share dates. And all of that is powered by good time. Don, thank you for being a sponsor. And we, we've got one more guest. And who is our next guest? So next we have Don from Georgia. All right, Don, I want to thank you for sending me this. Maybe a quick expl explanation of what we're looking at here. <laughs> I love it, David. Hi, everybody. This is Don from Georgia. Uh, David and I were visiting, and I said, you know, it'd be really fun if you put together a Zoom virtual background that if folks wanted to use to talk about the sharing show or the 9-9 event. So this was my uh, first attempt at just putting something together for a little fun for your Zoom background. Thank you, Don, for doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Happy to. Good to be on the show, everybody. I'm here just to remind you about the customer monthly networking event that we have the first Thursday of every month. May 6th is our upcoming one. Uh, it is at 3 p.m. Eastern. In June, we'll be making a time switch. We'll be moving to noon Eastern, which is nine Pacific, uh, in the hopes of involving more of our UK friends in that time zone. So be sure to spread the word with uh, your colleagues and fellow friends in the Workday networking sphere. Um, we have several topics to choose from. You'll see highlighted, these are some of the newer topics that will be started in May. I'd like to call your attention to the plan, return to office or manage hybrid workforce. Um, we see a lot of those questions now as people try to figure out how are they getting back into the work uh, and running with that. So if that is a topic of discussion for you or a colleague, we will have a breakout room uh, as well as all of these other topics uh, in our monthly networking. And here are just a few quick uh, tips. My favorite is it helps me 
helps me confirm I'm not crazy. So would love to have you join for the networking sessions. Come and share your story and ask questions of each other. Thanks, David. Thank you, Don. As a special guest, it's great to have you back here for uh, several, um, several of the shows. So now uh, we're ready. And I believe, Logan, you've already put the Zoom rooms into the chat. So just to make sure everyone understands here, you've got seven choices. And uh, several people will go past 10 o'clock object transporter, I know has to end, sorry, 10 o'clock Pacific. Several will go past the hour, but uh, number two um, is object transporter, Animesh. Uh, stay in this room if you want, recruiting. Um, Andre um, presented on that. Um, Career Hub and Jill, um, Boomerangs, uh, Todd, Automate Repetition, Animesh and Phenom and Good Time both have uh, virtual booths on the expo floor. Everybody talks. If there's over 10 people, maybe use the chat option. Nobody talks too much. These are the rules of our breakout sessions. Networking um, starts with everybody putting information into the chat because it's networking. You're handing out a business card. Last name's optional, company name's optional, but at least your first name, uh, the time zone you're in. And if you want to be part of ongoing networking with the same group, put in your email. Also, do you want to share or ask anything? Number of years of workday. Kane, you get to wrap us up and then we're into the breakout sessions. Excellent. Thank you, David, Logan, Teresa, and special thank you to our guests on the show today. Um, so as always, we will publish this episode of The Sharing Show on our YouTube channel. And if you head over and click on the like and subscribe, you'll get notified when this uh, episode is live. Uh, please make sure you stay on for the recruiting session. As David said, you've got the links to the in the chat to the other Zoom rooms. And all that's left to say is have a great work day and we'll see you next time. I'm just going to end out the show and then we'll come back on.